you get to set the parameters around what you are and what you're not going to do. You set your own standards, your own boundaries in whatever order you see fit. But the group did not trust him. Nobunaga spoke out against him. Several of the members spoke out against him almost immediately when they found out he had anything to do with it because they knew he was a wild card. They knew he was undependable. They knew he was focused on his own goals. He was selfish and thus he could not be trusted. Your I don't care attitude, if left unchecked, can make you a creep, which is exactly what Hisuka is. Hisuka is a creep. He's weird. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren and over here we discuss life topics by analyzing characters from popular TV and film. So today we are talking about Hisa Kamara from the Hunter x Hunter series and our topic is the pros and cons of selfishness. So I've been hearing lately a lot about people becoming more selfish, people needing to become more selfish. A lot of people feel like they have been a little bit too lenient with other people, a little too giving with other people, giving of their time, energy, commitment, things of that nature. And they haven't been getting enough back in return. They have not been poured back into. And so they are feeling a need to sort of pull back and learn more about themselves and do more of what makes them happy. This is the sense of selfishness that I'm talking about about not the kind that is intentionally hurtful to other people. So like I said, we're talking about Hisoka today. And he is a character who I think most of us could agree is selfish. He thinks about himself, his needs, his wants, and he really goes for it. His is a bit to an extreme. He doesn't consider really what anyone else has to say about what he does. So he is an extreme case, but we're going to look at his dynamic, his interactions with other people, his relationships, to see what being more selfish could look like if you choose to do so. The pros and the cons. So the first pro of becoming more selfish, being selfish, is that you get to prioritize. You get to choose what's important to you. You get to choose how you order your life. You get to choose what you do, when you do it, how much energy you put into it. Other people don't get to come in and tell you how to live your life, when to live your life, <laughs> why to live your life, because some people try to do that too. You get to set the parameters around what you are and what you're not going to do. You set your own standards, your own boundaries in whatever order you see fit. This is obviously a pro because many of us spend a lot of our lives subscribing to the ideals and layouts and plans that other people have for us instead of tapping in to what we know to be true for us. But the flip side to this is it automatically attracts judgment. When people see you doing things in your own way, <laughs> it automatically attracts people giving you their opinion. And that's one of the biggest things that people face when they start trying to do more of what they love or doing things in a certain way or in their own time. That's when the unsolicited opinions start coming in because people become concerned. <laughs> people wanna know why you're doing what you're doing. And some of them are not good intentions. Some of them are doing it because they might be envious of the way that you're doing things. Maybe they just don't like you. But there are some people who are genuinely concerned about the way that you're doing things. They might think you're messing up your life and these types of things. So just know that when you begin to put yourself first and your ideas and your way of doing things become your main mode of operation where other people can see, go ahead and get ready for the detractors. Go ahead and get ready for the people who uh, don't know what you're doing. Hisoka was judged pretty harshly for the things that he chose to do. He was ostracized by a lot of the fellow hunters, by some of the Phantom Troop members. They just didn't understand why he was doing the things he was doing. They didn't understand why he was sort of walking contrary to the things that they expected him to do. And they judged him for that. They didn't want to be around him. They didn't like him like that. They were hesitant to be around him. Part of it is because, you know, he's just very powerful and bloodlust and all that. But they just really did not want to be around him because of the way that he chose to do things, because of the way that he chose to order his priorities. If we look at his relationship with Machi in the scene where she throws him back up after his battles at Heaven's Arena, her disapproval of him and what he's doing, she just does not get it. And she is kind of disgusted, it seems, by him, even though he wants to kind of seemingly establish some type of relationship with her. I don't know if it was a friendship or whatever. 
he wants some company. He seems to want somebody around and he seems to like her. But because of the way that he does things, the fact that he's even fighting at Heaven's Arena, she does not understand. And that's how it goes a lot of times. People that you like or that you may want to get to know better and things like that, they may not agree with the way that you have ordered your life. And thus, you may not have access to them the way that you want. So you have to sort of choose between what is more important to you. Number two, when you're more selfish, you start setting your own rules and your own boundaries. You become this wild card, this attractive person that people like to be around. Oh, I don't know what they're gonna do next. You're interesting, you're intriguing, you're mysterious to other people. And you find people maybe being more attracted to you in some way. You do things out of the norm and that excites a lot of people because most people are operating usually in the same way, they have the same routines and a lot of people sit, follow the same plan in life. School, marriage, kids, that, that, that. So if you're doing something different, well, to some people that's automatically gonna set you up as this person who they wanna know more about. You might find people asking you more questions. They want to know more about you, the way that you think. And when we think about Hisoka, that's exactly what he was. A total wild card. I don't think it was any coincidence that they made him a clown joker type. He had actual cards and he was the wild card himself. You didn't know what Hisoka was thinking. You didn't know what he was up to. You didn't know whose side he was on. You didn't know who was going to help at any particular point in time. And that's what he made him such an intriguing character to so many of us. He's a fan favorite and a lot of that is because when he showed up you didn't even know he was going to show up and when he did you had to really tune in and listen in to even figure out what he was going to do. You just didn't know and that made him interesting. A lot of people in the show were intrigued by Hisoka. Gon himself being one of them. <laughs> and not in a weird way. He was kind of hooked on Hisoka after meeting him and hearing him and seeing how strange and how much of a wild card he really was. He kind of became fixated on Hisoka for a bit, training at Heaven's Arena, just wanting to fight him so bad. And in Gon's case, it was more of a, I just want to beat him because I don't want to owe him anything and he's just this really tough opponent. But you could tell there was something just that was intriguing about Hisoka. If we think about the Phantom Troop and the way they interacted with Hisoka, they just didn't know. They treated him quite a bit different than the rest of the members. They didn't know if he was gonna show up for the meeting. They didn't know whose side he was on when they were being fooled by Karapika. They just didn't know. And that's when we get to the con of being a wild card or the intriguing mysterious one that people don't know what they're gonna do next. It's very difficult for people to trust you, to believe you, or for you to become any type of leader because leadership requires people to trust you. And that is an issue you can often run into when you start setting your own rules and being your own person. People don't understand. While they might find it attractive in the beginning, ooh, that's different, that's wild. What it eventually ends up in a lot of times is people just not thinking that they can count on you. When names start coming up to name dependable people or give credit to people for being there for them and whatnot, your name doesn't come up. And these are the issues that Hisoka began to have within the Phantom Troop. They did not trust Hisoka. If we think about that situation, like I said, them trying to find out the identity of Karabika, of course Hisoka had his own <laughs> thing going on, his own reasons for doing what he was doing. But the group did not trust him. Nobunaga spoke out against him. Several of the members spoke out against him almost immediately when they found out he had anything to do with it because they knew he was a wild card. They knew he was undependable. They knew he was focused on his own goals. He was selfish and thus could not be trusted. So no going in when you're choosing you regularly where people can see, most likely people will not invest in you. They might find you entertaining. They may even like to be around you. But those investments that trust will likely not be there because they don't feel they can count on a wild card. Number three is that your selfishness can breed a great deal of confidence. You finally begin to choose you. You start to know what you want and you go after what you want. Next thing you know, you're achieving what you want. You're doing what you want. You're becoming the person that you want to be. And all of a sudden, you're a more confident, well-presenting person. 
you find yourself being able to do what you want without feeling guilty the way that you did in the beginning of this process. You feel more free. It's not difficult for you to unsubscribe to the thoughts and opinions of other people. It's not difficult for you to say no when you want to say no, yes when you want to say yes. It's no longer difficult to do those things and you're more confident in yourself and your abilities than ever, right? So that's good. But the flip side to this one, the con, and this is probably one of Hisoka's biggest faults. <laughs> your I don't care attitude, if left unchecked, can make you a creep, which is exactly what Hisoka is. Hisoka is a creep. He's weird. And I know we love him. I like him. He's one of my favorite characters. He's attractive. He's mysterious. He's, just, he's that dude, but he's a creep. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows that Hisoka is a weirdo. And that's what can happen when you really, really start not to care. You start unsubscribing to things that maybe you shouldn't unsubscribe to, like morality, <laughs> like group agreements. Hey, let's not do this as humanity. Like, let's not do these things. You un start unsubscribing from stuff like that if you leave it unchecked. You no longer care when people are shaming you in a healthy way. Hisoka has an affection for people he should not have an affection for. Gong and Kiwa. That's not okay. That's not good. But he does not care. He doesn't care who knows about it. He doesn't care if they themselves know about it. He is not trying to keep this a secret from anybody. He lives with his life on his arms, shoulders. What am I saying? He just doesn't care. So you never want to let your selfishness snowball so much that you wind up becoming a societal deviant. <laughs> and it seems like an extreme jump. Well, I just want to do a couple more things. Yes, but if you begin to overdo it, it gets good to you sometimes. Just doing what you want to do and you no longer care what anybody has to say. Sometimes things are set up to keep people safe and to keep people thinking right. Not all societal rules and societal norms are terrible things. Some of them are in place for a reason. And when you start not caring about those things, which can happen when you get a little overzealous in treating yourself, that's when the creep can creep in. Okay, and you guys, so that's all I have for this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all of the things, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.